Good afternoon. There have been 37 lightning strikes detected within 1.1 miles of our house. Please make sure everyone is inside the house. The large garage door need to be closed. It is getting a little dark inside the house because of the rain outside. I will turn on some extra lights in the living room. So when there's lightning outside, what we do is we turn on the inside lights. So we basically just use that as a way to tell if lightning, if light is needed. Typically when there's lightning, if we look outside, it gets darker out. So we need more light in this room. So we use the lightning detector to sort of uh, give us another piece of information to use in that automation. So what is the lightning network? Let me show you. So it's basically a hacks add-on. So if we go here, we're going to go to hacks. If you haven't installed hacks, be sure to check out, uh, you can check out this link right here or here, here somewhere. And also, uh, in the description for a great video on how to install it. So this is the lightning detector that I'm using. It's a custom component. With Hacks, it's super easy to install. Um, here's the actual repo. It's updated quite a bit. So there's always new things that sort of pop up. And basically what it's doing is it's, it's, an, it's scraping an API or it's using an API to capture all the lightning strikes that happen in your area. So I'm in Florida. This is the lightning capital of the world. So there's always lightning. Lightning's, I don't know, it's a big deal down here. It's serious. So when there is lightning storms, you do want to come inside. Uh, you don't really want to be outside when there's heavy lightning uh, around here. So, so what this detector does is it integrates into Home Assistant via hacks and it creates a bunch of sensors for them. So three sensors are created by the lightning sensor. The one that I use the most is basically the sensor. This is the counter. This tells me when there's a lightning strike. Uh, this tells me the distance of the lightning strike. And I'm not exactly sure what the the azimuth would give me. So I don't use this sensor, but I use, I use the lightning counter and I use the uh, distance for, for notifications and for tweets. So let me show you. So if you go back to configuration and we go to integrations, we will see here are some options. You can say, basically you can say the radius within kilometers. So everything's kilometers. So for five kilometers, it's about two and a half miles away from my house. That's what I want within 45 minutes. And we're going to track a hundred, but the lightning sensor does is when there's an actual lightning strike, it creates actual lightning sensors, uh, additional sensors in home assistant. So you can track, you can actually, I don't use the map feature in home assistant, but if you use the map feature, you can actually plot where these lightning strikes are occurring. Each one of the sensors that it creates will be a different uh, point on your map. I don't use that. I just want it for the, so the way I want it is I just want it for the awareness. I want to know when there's lightning strikes near the house. Sometimes the kids are in the pool. Sometimes we're in the pool. Sometimes we're outside. So if there's some lightning coming in or if there's lightning nearby the house, I'd like to be notified. And then I'd like to just make sure we're inside. Another thing I'm using it for is for the lights, which is what I showed you in the very beginning of this video. When there's lightning storm approaching, typically the clouds come in, it gets darker and I don't have a Lux sensor yet. That's something that I need to build, but I don't have one yet to, to just detect light in, in the house. So this is sort of a cheat. If you don't have the hardware, you can use something like this to sort of sense when it's going to, you know, when it's getting dark out in addition to like cloud cover and actual precipitation. So rain or, or snow, or if you're in different parts of the country and then use that to bring in extra lights. So when I do sense lightning strikes, we turn on the lights in the living room to brighten up the house because typically it's darker outside. I'm just going to jump over to the history tab and I'm going to take a look and see if I can show you when there was a rainstorm, uh, some lightning strikes. So let's scroll down to this. We have a lot of sensors in the house. So here's a typical lightning counter. So whenever there's a lightning strike, we do a uh, text to speech over the house. So let's, let me show you a sample of that. Good afternoon. There have been one lightning strikes detected within 2.3 miles of our house. Please make sure everyone is inside the house. 
Nevo is asking for help. The error reported is vacuum is stuck. Please find him and help him. Outside, it is going to be heavy rain for the hour. So there you go. So that's a, that's a typical message that we would hear when there was a lightning strike. Part of my speech engine will stack other things into that into that one message. So in this case, our vacuum cleaner Nito was also stuck. So this just gave us another gave everyone in the house another reminder that uh, someone should go help him. Right? If you don't want a vacuum, you need to help the robot. Let's dive into the code and let me show you exactly what we're doing. So everything I'm doing is in a package. So we have a lightning package right here. So I'm still working on some additional items. Uh, I'm working on a snooze basically for the lightning alert. So sometimes when it rains down here, lightning comes in a lot. So we can have sustained lightning over 45 minutes, an hour, two hours. So after we get that first alert, everyone's inside. Really, you know, I don't want to keep getting the alert. So I'm working on setting up a snooze. So this will be part of that. We have this input Boolean that uh, combined with some iOS notifications, we're going to trigger uh, a, a snooze. So, but before that, what I was really just doing is your basic notifications, which is so what we're doing is we're just triggering on any state change for the sensor. So basically it's a counter. So if, as soon as it goes from zero to one and additional, uh, we then that will trigger. So we make sure that we're home. We make sure that it's above zero because a, a state, a trigger state from one to zero would also trigger this. So this rules out when it goes back down to zero. And then we make sure that this is for future. I'm going to make sure that there's no, there's no snooze uh, on. So then we just do a typical notify. So this is going to send to our iOS. It sends it to the whole family that says there's a lightning warning. It tells us what distance it was away. So this is in kilometers and then we're dividing it by 1.69 in order to get miles and we're rounding it up. So we're doing uh, lightning has been detected within some number miles of our home. Be careful if outside, please come inside. So a category of lightning, this is going to be for the iOS actionable notifications and it's going to go to the whole family and the, um, uh, the APN SID is the alert. So the reason we put that in there is so that as these alerts get sent, you only see the last alert. So it basically destroys the last one. So if you didn't look at your phone and you had it and you picked it up, you didn't see, you wouldn't have this stack of alerts uh, sitting there waiting for you. Then of course, once the iOS is done, we do, uh, this is the script to create the speech, to create that wave file that we just heard. So we'll say, you know, lightning has been detected, blah, blah, blah. We check the we check to make sure the windows are closed. We check to make sure the garage is closed because rain is most likely coming. And then we delay for 20 minutes. And then after that, we do send out a uh, a tweet on the house. So the house will just alert. So here's a sample one. You can see we just uh, we'll send out a tweet from two days ago that says one lightning strike has been recorded. So it'll have the lightning the the number of lightning strikes and the 2.3 uh, the distance from the house. One of the things you might be wondering is why we have the delay. So because this is in single mode, it's basically just going to sit there. Uh, no, if it's re-triggered, it's going to not trigger again until this script is completely done. So in this case, what's happening is the first lightning strike will give us the notification. It'll wait 20 minutes. And during that 20 minutes, there might be five more lightning strikes. When this eventual tweet goes out, it'll have the number of lightning strikes at that particular moment. Then we wait another 20 minutes and then we allow the script to run again. So at most we would be notified every 40 minutes, which is kind of why I'm putting the snooze in. So this way, if after 40 minutes, you can just snooze it. If you get that second one, you just snooze it and you won't, you know, you just won't be alerted for the rest of the day. This is a really, really straightforward uh, integration. If you have hacks installed, you can just add this custom component in. I feel like it adds a lot of value to the house because it gives us these early warning notifications for rain. Uh, we can push them to the phone. I think I'm going to build some logic into this particular script that says, you know, if we're right now, it's, it's only alerting if we're home, but I think I'm going to have something that just says if we're not home, uh, it still just may have sent us a phone. It won't do the voice, but it'll send us a phone message to let us know that there's lightning coming and there's storms in case we're just out and about around the neighborhood. So this will give us an indication or heads up that some lightning is coming. I think it's a great solution, software-based, doesn't cost anything. If you don't have the hardware that you need to 
do actual lightning detection or, or like a weather station, I think this is a great fit. So check it out. Let me know if you've done this or if you've tried it out and how it's worked out for you in the comments. I'm really curious to see if anyone's added any additional sort of logic to it or they're using it in a different way. I'm kind of just using it for notifications, like an early warning notification. And I am using it for that lighting. So, so for some additional lighting in the house when there's a rainstorm. I haven't really figured out the logic to turn it off yet. I think Lux kind of light sensor is probably the best bet, but for a no cost option, this is pretty good. So let me know if you liked it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.